the synchronicities uh, and coincidences, meaningful coincidences, could drive a person crazy. If that person accepts, you know, the materialist view of reality. You're listening to The Margins, where we explore obsessions, the supernormal, and oddly shaped ideas. The book is American Cosmic, UFOs, Religion, Technology, and X-Files meets souped-up Da Vinci Code by Diana Walsh Pasulka. She's a professor of religious studies at the University of North Carolina, Wilmington, and chair of the Department of Philosophy and Religion. Now, what caught our attention after reviewing several hours of interviews was the number of curious synchronicities that kept popping out, becoming part of the creative process itself. In this mashup, we take a look at a few of these strange, beautiful, and weird synchronicities that cast a net over Professor Palsuka as she was writing the book. Let's take a listen. The book is about my travels with scientists who believe that they engineer technologies from UFO artifacts. And these are scientists that are from uh, major research universities, like the top five. If I told you which university, you would say, oh my goodness. Um, it's also um, work with people from the American Space Program. Um, these people are anonymous in my book. Okay, they have to be anonymous. This book was, was read by them, and certain, certain information had to be removed. And people have told me all kinds of different coincidences that they've had, a lot of them having to do strangely enough and ironically enough and absurdly enough with Fight Club. So um, I had a series of very strange Fight Club synchronicities. Um, Fight Club is a movie um, in that, I think it's a 1999 movie, and it's about a very subversive group of of people and and this man who starts this group of men who fight each other. And so this man encounters Brad Pitt's character and he's just out of, you know, he's, he's someone who doesn't exist. He's just too incredibly amazing to exist, right? So I thought, you know, I was trying to understand how to um, convey this man, Tyler, who I write about in the first chapter and throughout the book, how do I convey this guy's character? I mean, this this man is someone who I've I've never met a man like this before. He's he's so incredibly um, from the movies, you know. He's he's so incredibly from science fiction that what could I possibly call him? So I thought at first that I'd call him like you know David, as in like David Bowie or something like that. But that just did not fit the guy's personality. And so finally, what hit me was you know this, he is invisible, and he does do these things. He was you know a fighter. And he does, you know, so I called him Tyler, as in Tyler Durden. And then when I called him that, and I had actually sent him um, the, uh, the draft, the first draft, so he could okay it, he, he couldn't believe it because he took pictures. He took pictures of the purple robe that Tyler Durden wears. He actually found a robe that was purple and looked just like it. It's his favorite movie. He had soap. I mean, he had everything from Fight Club. And he said he said he literally cried when he read it because he thought that he had been understood. <laughs> like Tyler always says, why do I feel like I'm living in a script and I don't really have control over what I'm doing? But I'm, you know, the things that happen to me, like show me what I'm doing, but I only know it after I do it. It may prove to be that psyche and matter are actually the same phenomenon, one observed from within and the other from without. Dr. Jung put forward a new concept that he called synchronicity. This term means a meaningful coincidence of outer and inner events that are not themselves causally connected. The emphasis lies on the word meaningful. So, in, so, you know, when Christmas Eve hit, I mean, I'm Christmas Eve, when New Year's Eve hit, 12, 12, right? And so everybody's out there screaming and doing the things that they do. I wake up and there's that book, The Gay Science, at my bedside. I hadn't read it because I actually didn't like Nietzsche at the time. 
And so I picked it up and um, and there I, I randomly opened to a page and it's a book of aphorisms and it's an aphorism about New Year's Eve. And it's also about Saint Januarius, right? And he references a saint, Saint Januarius, who's basically one of my favorite saints. Saint Januarius, right? Whose blood runs, whose blood is desiccated. His blood is like, doesn't, you know, it's in this church in, I believe it's France. I'm not entirely sure. And so every New Year's, his blood actually turns uh, liquid again. And so this was, you know, and I thought, wow, that's a really weird synchronicity. And I didn't even call it a synchronicity then because, you know, I was, my mind frame wasn't there. And so I, I thought, this is really odd. And he said, you know, he had a very powerful, it was a very powerful aphorism. And so I turned the page because I was so fascinated now all of a sudden by this book by Nietzsche. I turned the page and he basically had this incredibly poignant, beautiful passage on why you should not believe in synchronicities. <laughs> and I was like, what? This is a really intense coincidence. And, he's, and he, you know, he says something that was really profound. He says, today, I'll never say no again. I'm going to say yes to life. Book four, St. Januarius, 276, for the new year. I'm still alive. I still think. I must still be alive because I still have to think. Sum ergo cogito, cogito ergo sum. Today, everyone allows himself to express his dearest wish and thoughts. So I too want to say what I wish from myself today and what thought first crossed my heart. What thought shall be the reason, warrant, and sweetness of the rest of my life? I want to learn more and more how to see what is necessary in things as what is beautiful in them. Thus, I will be one of those who make things beautiful. Amor fati. Let that be my love from now on. I do not want to wage war against ugliness. I do not want to accuse. I do not even want to accuse the accusers. Let looking away be my only negation. And all in all, and on the whole, someday I want only to be a yes-sayer. Okay, so the book encounter is, um, okay, so it's a synchronicity, a meaningful synchronicity, but the way I use, I use the phrase book encounter because every person who I interviewed in the book who was, you know, who was an experiencer had a book encounter. And that means that it was like what happened with me with Nietzsche. So once they had an experience that they couldn't really understand, you know, it didn't fit into their uh, framework, right? Their, the kind of way in which they think of the world. They would then find a book, a book would pop out at them or someone would give them the book or yeah, like um, Tyler had it. After the Challenger episode where he lost his, you know, his good friend, uh, the astronaut, Judy Resnick, he was in a state of depression and he didn't know what to do. And he said that somehow somebody had put in his luggage Cosmos by um, Carl Sagan. And so that was his book encounter. He said it completely changed his view of everything. So a book encounter is basically what Arthur Kessler called, or Kersler called the library angel. And it's that book that shows up when you most need it. Sometimes it's what you don't think you need. You don't, you're not looking for it. And all of a sudden there it is, and it's precisely that what, which you need. And so um, it's not just Kessler who talked about this, it's Carl Jung talked about it. So many scholars have talked about this kind of idea of synchronicity. It doesn't have to be a book. It could be a movie encounter, or it could be some people have song encounters. These things are like Japanese koans, you know? They're just like, we don't know. They wake us up. And, you know, what's the meaning of them? I don't know, but they make sure that, that we know that the world is weirder than we think. A 
lot of times I, in my research, what I found with this book in particular was that I'd do it and I wouldn't know what I was doing until about a month later. And I'd look back on it and I'd say, wow, that's what I did. And that's why I did it. What an astonishing thing a book is. You've been listening to The Book Encounter on The Margins, where we explore obsessions, the supernormal, and oddly shaped ideas. Music by Setunaman. Produced by Francesca Robin. Audio engineering by Tim Barron of Tim Barron Video. Head over to lequescencemedia.com for show notes and subscribe to our newsletter for more oddly shaped ideas. This program is completely supported by fans like you. Drop us a tip to help keep the lights on links at the website. Thanks for your support and keep listening. In January, a tiny fragment of a long whale song uh, might sound like this. Whoop.